Hello Helpful Programmer here and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching about how to create animated sprites. Let's create a new sprite in Paint or any other graphical editor. Let's create it 3 frames long. In Dark GDK we use frames so instead of having loads of different images we can have one image split into different frames. I've split mine into 3. So 1, 2 and 3. Uh, we're going to be using this to create a walk cycle. Each frame has to be equal in length. So this one's 47 pixels wide, and if I check, this one's also 47 pixels wide, and everything else. And as you can see, also I've added a red border around. You can clearly distinguish between each frame, but sometimes in games we don't want that, so we can just colour it out with the pink. OK, so let's put that back on and save it. Going to File, Save As, My Documents, Visual Studio 2008, Projects, Our Project, so starting off, click it again, and let's save it as Player Walk Cycle. And save. Now let's go to our project. Opening up our project, let's delete everything so only the shell is left with the while loop and the initializers. So let's go and delete all if statements and all db sprites and db load sprites because we're going to be learning a whole new set of functions. Once we've done that, let's create our first function. Instead of db loads, we use db create animated sprite. And this sort of replaces our load ID, but the only difference between this and the load ID is that we specify how many frames the animated sprite has. Going back to our picture, we know it's got three, but we'll put that in later. And for every DB sprite, we need a DB create animated sprite. So I couldn't have DB sprites and have loads of them coming off the DB create animated sprite as I could DB load image as it can only do one, so db create animated sprite and db sprite. And then if I wanted to make two I would have to go db create animated sprite db sprite and then do the same again with the different sprite ID. Going into our db create animated sprite, let's go and put in the sprite ID. It wants a sprite ID first so let's go and put the sprite ID of one. As later on we're going to be using db sprite and it also asks for the sprite ID, we also put 1, but we'll get to that in a minute. And then after we've put in 1, we do a comma, and then this is, like in the load ID, the file name, so open speech marks and player walk cycle. And then in here, it asks for the width and height. This isn't the width and height of the object, this is how many frames across we have and how many frames down we have. So going back to our image, we can see that we've got three images across and one image down. If we had two images down, it would be something like this, but we don't at the moment, so let's only keep to one. So let's put comma three across, so three in the width, comma, and one down. And let's use the image ID, so this is where you declare your image ID, and let's use one as well closing parentheses and do a semicolon. Now just like when we create a normal sprite we have to place it somewhere on the screen so let's use the function db sprite open parentheses and in here put in the sprite id so the one that we used here so 1 and then this asks for the x and y coordinates so let's like before put it to the coordinates 100 across and 50 down it doesn't have to be there but I'm just going to put it there for now do a comma and then we use the image ID which is 1 so we put 1 close parentheses and do a semicolon you can have so if you had db loads image and for some reason you're loading up the same image as the player walk cycle you can put the same load ID so the load image player walk cycle dot bmp close parentheses 
and then we can put one in the load ID as well it will count it as the same but we're not doing that at the moment so now let's go and compile it once it's loaded we you can, we can see it's being made at 100 pixels across and the 50 pixels down instead in our picture we've got three because we split it into three pieces it only shows the first piece so the key frame almost so the first frame as you can see it's the first one now let's go and change it so going back to our project let's go to the while loop and then we're going to be learning two functions db set sprite frame and db play sprite let's go to db set sprite frame first let's make an if statement so if db up key and open close parentheses equals one so it equals true we want to set it to frame two so db set sprite frame first off the sprite id so one the one that we want to change and the frame we want to set it to so two closing parentheses into a semicolon let's also put the else and close parentheses db set sprite frame one two one so put it back to frame one now let's go and compile it now you'll see it's at frame one because we're not pressing the up key but when we press the up key it goes to frame two and then when we take it off it goes back to frame one putting it beside our image so you can see what's happening it's on frame one and when you press up it changes to frame two now let's learn db play sprite so going back to our project let's change db set sprite frame to db play sprite open parentheses and then first off we put the sprite id so we want to use sprite one do a comma and then here we put the starting frame so we want to start the frame from one so let's put one and then we want to end the frame at three so let's put three this will give the impression of a walk cycle next we put the delay this is going to be the um, the delay between each frame so let's put a hundred closing parentheses into a semicolon and then in the else statement let's leave db set sprite frame one to one because if we've stopped walking we want to go back to the stationary position which is frame one so let's go and compile it now and see what happens as you can see when we press the up key it will play through all the frames and then when we release it will go back to frame one so putting it alongside our image you can see that it goes through all the frames at the delay of a hundred and then when we release it goes to the frame one the stationary position hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and i hope you have learnt a lot bye